cover how to create an animation in Fusion 360 and export that as a video. I've managed to get the webcam working, so I don't know if that helps or not, because <laughs> then I can kind of make gestures. Uh, but this is what we're going to be creating, or something similar to this. So I'll show you. And it's froze. Okay. Refresh. <laughs> okay, trust it not to work. Um, well, hopefully you can see as I scrub along the timeline, you can see we're going to change the camera angle and then we're going to open the hinge, zoom in a bit more, remove the pin. Oh, is it going to... No. We're going to remove the pin and then we're going to remove uh, one half of the hinge and then pan around again. So this is useful. If you've got something like this, or maybe uh, a radio component or an assembly that you want to show moving because you can't make it for whatever reason, or you just want to demonstrate that to someone who doesn't quite understand what's going on, it's quite useful for submissions as well. If you want to um, add a link to your portfolio, like given the current circumstances, um, it might be useful to submit a link. Uh, with an animation. So basically we're going to start with the hinge. Uh, so this is what it'll look like for you. So this is just the design workspace. We're going to come over to the left and then hit animation. And now we're in the animation timeline. So by default, by default it is recording with the red. So any movement you make after you select a certain amount of keyframes, the camera will pan from the original position to the next one. So you can see on, on keyframe zero, we want to that's where we want to start. So we want to start with this view, and then I'll just move the keyframes to let's say 10. So after 10 keyframes, we want to change the position to the one that we want so it's kind of panned down. Um, so just before I do that. In Fusion, you can create different storyboards, so you can add loads of different animations together and then export there as a video to create a really long animation if you want to. But for now, we'll just stick with the storyboard one. So we've defined our start position. Now after 10 keyframes, I kind of want the camera and use your orbit tool um, to be somewhere like that. So you can see if we scroll back, that's how the camera's going to move. It's nice and easy, like that. So now what we want to do is we want to animate this part of the hinge. So if we just uh, click M for move on the keyboard, sorry, select the part, M for move. And now without moving this, we're just going to pan. And now you'll notice that if I actually if I rotate this, it's not rotating on the right axis that we want. So what we need to do is uh, hit him again. And then over here, click on set pivot. So now we can pick what part of the object we want to move it around. So obviously, because this is quite a simple object, we want to select the center axis of where the pin would be. And then make sure you, you click the tick on set pivot, otherwise it won't move. And now after another, let's say, 10 keyframes, we want this to be here, approximately. Click OK. Now you can see if we scroll back, we first zoomed in a little bit. And now as soon as the camera stops, this starts to pivot. But what we can do is we can actually move this. So if we want it to start pivoting, halfway down the camera pan we can do that so now if i've moved this part the rotation there you can see it now it should start to as the camera's moving it should start to rotate which can be quite nice so now we've got that now if we can oh we can't duplicate so we'll select another 10 ish keyframes 
and now we want to rotate that back. So end the move again, click the part, set the pivot to uh, click OK. Now we want to grab this handle and then move it back to there. And then click OK. Now you can see like that. It's going back where we want it to be. But I want to say about here, actually, here I'd like the camera to be in a different position. So all we have to do is select the keyframe that we want it to be in at the end. And then maybe there. So you can see as it starts to rotate back, the camera is going to start moving to that end position. But while it's moving back, I would like it the pin to come out. So I'm just going to pick a keyframe halfway in between the camera pan movement again. So we'll say about there. And now I want to hit M on the keyboard, select the component. This time it's the pin. We don't need to set the pivot because it's already on this center axis here. So I'm going to go there. Um, actually, sorry. There. I need this to come out. To there. Now if I go back, we can see that it's closed. Camera's moving. Pin starts to move. And now this starts opening again. But if I'm not happy with when this starts to move, I can actually move this ahead to be to be about halfway. So now it's going to start the top part is going to start moving back. The camera's going to start moving, and it's not until now that the pin starts to move. So it's quite an easy uh, tool to use. There's there's nothing complicated to do. Now I think what I would like is the camera to be bit further around so I can actually rotate that so that we get the pin in camera. Take that over there. Rotate around. There we are. I don't know what happened there. So now if we go back see the hinges moving back, pins coming out, cameras turning slowly and now I've got a second camera moving now which is going to slowly turn it around like that. And now at the end if I want this to remove or this front one to move forward so you can see it coming apart we can select another couple of frames and then end to move, click this and then I want it to be there, like that. Okay, so because I moved the camera to fit this part in, that has been added as a camera movement as well as the movement of the hinge part. So that's fine, I think I can delete that. But here I can actually move this up beforehand. Now you can see it's just the hinge moving and not the camera. So now if I'm happy with that I can just play. So it does take a while for some reason. It'll play through faster, I don't know why on the second one but it just does. So now we can see that's right. We need that moving on the first part camera movement, hinge moves back, pin comes out, camera moves again and then the front part should move. Now with a bit of luck it should play faster. If I click it again. Oh it's working. Oh anyway. Okay that that must have been because I was selecting more keyframes. So if you bring all these closer together, the movements will be faster. So you can see 
yeah, it was right. It was, I was the one who's wrong. So after this is a 10 second movement. So it's going to take 10 seconds for that to move there. And then this part is going to take about another 10 seconds, give or take. And then this one is quite a short clip, so I think uh, it's only about four, four and a half seconds long for that camera movement, which is fine. But I can drag this out. I can drag that camera movement out to last the whole length of that entire movement, so it's a bit smoother. So that's fine, so I'm happy with that. Um, you can see which components are doing what if you click on the left. And then obviously this is just the view. So if I'm happy, which I am, uh, I can, oh, by the way, you can also annotate. Um, so if you wanted to annotate a part, it was, um, pin moves or something. That annotation will show up in another row at the bottom. So you can annotate, uh, where is, is that, that pin here? So I can move this keyframe, the annotation keyframe, to the start of when the pin moves. So hopefully it will show up. I've made this too long. Why is that not? That's strange. Normally this would come up and it would it would have a little call out bubble. I'm not sure why it's not working. But you can understand anyway, you can add uh, pins to things so you could say this would be made of wood or metal or this would move in this way to prevent this. So you can explain how these components work together with callouts in the video to save you having to add it on on top or add an audio clip or anything like that. So that's a really quick way of doing it. So if you're happy, you just click publish video, set the resolution. I probably recommend uh, 1920 by 1080p, so that's just 1080p video or 720p. Um, these will render quicker, but this will be higher quality. So if you've got the time, I'd probably recommend using full HD. And then once that's fine, uh, you can select the storyboard. But, and then name it, uh, file type in before, and then tell it where you want it to export to. And then that's it. You've got an animation video created in Key, uh, Fusion 360.